is a business university in outside of Boston, and I guess you're somewhere over here somewhere. And um, Bentley is a a business university just outside of Boston, where I've been teaching. And uh, so we're over here. That's better. We even have our own pin on on uh, Google Maps, which is kind of nice. Um, the project that I want to talk to you about is the assignment that I have had at the university for the past 10 years, which was to reinvent what a student center learning lab would look like. Uh, we had a, a prior uh, tutoring center and learning center, which uh, was not, which was in need of a reboot. And so uh, in 2010, spring of 2011, my uh, former department chair came in and said to me, Mark, we want you to run the CIS lab next year. And I said, no. And then he asked me again the next day and I said, no. And then finally I said, okay, but uh, I don't want that job. I would like a different job instead. And so I rebranded this lab as the, as the CIS sandbox in 2011. And so this is the beginning of our 10th year. Um, I can pop the link into chat if you wanna look at the uh, website for us and it'll probably go down because uh, we're not used to having so many people on it, but you never know. Uh, so you can visit us at, um, actually, Diana, can you do it? It's cissandbox.com. Uh, and um, you, Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. Thanks. I have three screens in front of me, and it's hard for me to navigate all of them at the moment. Um, so what I wanted to do is tell you a little bit about how we've adapted a 21st century learning center um, and uh, then show you a bit about some of the projects our students are doing. And also talk a little bit about how we've adapted to the pandemic because uh, teaching and learning in the in the age of the pandemic has changed as well. Uh, so this is a what, what you see when you first walk into the room. You can see behind the little logo here, there's a screen where in normal circumstances, people would come in and swipe in so we would know that they're there. And then they would go in and sit at one of these tables and, and do some work with their with their colleagues or with their, with their fellow students. Uh, we had a big piece of our, our, our website is uh, student-based presentations and there's a schedule showing when people work uh, by the day or by the week. Um, and, and then there's a page which shows all the tutors who work with us as well. And we like to use new technology in our, in our area. The computer we, we like information to, so here's a quick guided tour of what our center looks like. Focus, uh, this was taken this fall when we needed to begin to do social role. distancing. And this lab so you can see we'll find undergraduate tutors get together, to help you with uh, any coding technology and, related courses, uh, either in person or online. Be that's only part of the CIS but we wanted to show that it's actually experience. possible to collaborate it's and work together in a space also home to some of the most innovative equipment on campus, uh, including virtual reality headsets, Amazon Alexa, and you can see we're using some virtual reality headsets and Google Homes and Alexas and other gadgets because one of the things that I realized about that Right off the bat, any point if we didn't have year, devices for students, students to play with, apps, our, our classes, best students would never go there. Uh, it would only be a, a, a learning center for students who need help. And I really wanted to engage all students in the network of online alumni learning and community uh, throughout, emerging uh, throughout what we do. Students take the so let me take a minute and show you um, a short video about, um, this is about four minutes. And it is the um, a video that we put together to commemorate 10 years of, of our learning center uh, that, that, uh, we, that opened in fall 2010. Can you hear the audio of the, um, can you hear the, audio of the video? Sorry? Can you hear this, the audio from the, from the, uh, from the video? Um, just a tiny bit. Okay, let me see if I can make it louder. Not yet. All uh, right, let me. Yeah, it's, it's the, the volume there. Yeah, that button. Yeah. So this is what, the, I'll talk over it for a bit. This is what the space looked like when, when we began. It was a dark, quiet space, which we had uh, repainted and repurposed. You can see the, the, the before and the after photos at the top and then the bottom of the screen. Uh, we were then part of uh, the, the, the school newspaper op cover opening and students talked about the idea of collaboration and, and using these at the time these collaboration tables were brand new uh, is it, instead of having students sit at tables facing the walls to have students sit at tables facing each other was a brand new uh thing for us so that we showed that 
and how that allows students to work actually work together on projects. Uh, we talked about tutoring, and uh, this was taken in and how students actually can come together for tutoring with uh, some of the best tutors on campus. And so these are some students talking about their experience. One of my favorite moments here is when our school teachers get here to sit down the side and uh, they can spend a long time with that. And uh, Jerry, who graduated about three or four years ago, said that he really appreciated the opportunity to be able to add value to the students' experiences by being able to help them uh, work with their homework and with their assignments. And that was a, a big piece of his work. Uh, Brandon gave us a quick tour of the facility, again, showing what, what it used to look like back in the good old days when people actually sit together. We would have presentations from companies coming in. Students would be working on some of the latest technologies like Google Glass. Or here they built a video wall. Here there's a, a robotic head that uh, when you swipe your ID card, um, some students wrote an application that you swipe your ID card in and the robot lights up and then says, and then will announce the student's name uh, after it reads in from the ID card. Um, then we got a bit uh, retrospective and showed all of the all of the students who worked with us over the past 10 years uh, in our little family album here. And you'll notice that there was a big change in 2020 because of that's the first year where we couldn't get all of our students together in the same place at the same time because of the pandemic. Uh, one of the big things that students did to enable tutoring and, and learning throughout the past 10 years is creating videos. Uh, a lot of our students learn Excel. And so uh, this just shows several of the videos that our students created so that they could be around to help their classmates uh, with their with their problems using Excel, with their homework with Excel. What we learned when we first did this was that it was also a way to, for the students to create relationships with their, their students because People would come in, watch some of these videos, and then they would uh, want to see that tutor in person who they saw on the screen. Uh, this is just an example of some tutoring going on, uh, playing with some new technologies like virtual reality headsets, which we like to do, but we can't do anymore. And just a, a sense of the the life and the and the spirit and the pulse of the space as, as students play with different technology and and come together. Both, it shows that learning can happen both inside the classroom and outside the classroom. Uh, and then we talk a little about careers and how the 21st Century Learning Lab has to be a place where uh, what students learn and where they learn it links them to where they're going to be uh, applying their knowledge in their future careers. And so Jim here is talking about some of his responsibilities beyond tutoring, which included, in his case, uh, creating some of the videos that we talked about earlier. Uh, to help create instructional materials that um, that we use for learning. Um, Halen's job was to manage social media, and and she went on to uh, do actually end up doing part of that work in her career afterward. So this is what it looked like at the beginning, and it was far more than a coat of paint that made it a more vibrant place. Um, it was also changing the culture of how students learn. And you can watch that and all of the videos from our open house presentation are online. Uh, we had students presenting on various topics from tutoring during the pandemic to some of their more data driven projects as well um, as at, the, at our open house a few weeks ago. What I wanted to talk, talk to you a little bit about now is how we've adapted the way we provide tutoring services to our students in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, because what we realized is that it, we used to be only open in person, and that won't work when you can't meet in person. And so we needed to first build a community online, because when students meet online, we wanted them to get a sense of belonging, a sense that they, that they could create relationships with the students and the tutors who they work with. Um, so one way to do that, as I said, was through videos. And we created a bunch of brand new videos this fall, especially for incoming students who were overwhelmed with, how do I get onto Blackboard? How do I find my class? How do I upload my files? How do I prepare my computer to take an online exam, which I've never done before? And so we created several video uh, lessons on how to do these things 
available online 24-7 because of the time differences where students were coming to learn about these things. Uh, so they could access this information from anywhere, anytime. We also did something really interesting. We wanted to welcome back several of our alumni who were working at the companies that you see here, Google, Uber, Facebook, Amazon, Boston Dynamics, and, and some others to talk about their careers. So every Wednesday for 10 weeks in a row, we had two or three students coming back to talk about their jobs, talk about how their experiences working as a tutor brought them or prepared them for their current careers. And this helped us not only create community among current students, but also involve alumni in our, in our 10th anniversary by having them share their success stories. We would have about 20, maybe 20, 25 students almost every week listening to these presentations, which we also archived online. And it um, really gave current students a sense that, hey, this might be me three or four years from now. Uh, so among the speakers we had was uh, Stefan over here in the second row. Stefan was works at Facebook in uh, Portland, Oregon, and he was responsible for bringing the Oculus Quest uh, to headset to market. So he talked about he talked about uh, the supply chain for, for virtual reality. Uh, Jake was a student who started his own company and talked about uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, there are a couple of students who worked at Amazon. Frankie talked about what it was like to work getting uh, Amazon's shopping stores uh, on, implemented. So it was a great way for students to see where they themselves might be in a few years. We offer tutoring both in person and in four ways. Uh, we were open with limited access for a few hours for students as a place to go in between their, hard, their hybrid classes, and a few people came by. Um, we also did something new. We had tutors assigned to every section of every course that we offered practically uh, to give review sessions uh, and, and dedicated drop-in hours so that uh, students in every class would know there was somebody who was there for them. And that uh, helped create uh, diminish faculty office hours and also helped create relationships among tutors and students and students in the classroom. We also did drop in hours on Zoom. And uh, we could see uh, based on Zoom data that the, this was pretty well received. The big spike at the beginning of the term was because we ran uh, online sessions to help students set up their laptops for courses they were taking. But then after that, we were pretty busy uh, between 50 to 100 students a day on average uh, visiting us online. Um, through through drop-in hours, uh, you can see week by week, uh, things went up and then at the beginning of the term and they spiked shortly after midterms. Uh, this is all before Thanksgiving, before November. And then the other thing we did was we wanted to recognize that you don't need to be on the clock when you are uh, in a remote environment. And so we wanted to work on demand. And so what we did was we created a, a system where uh, I called it Uber style tutoring because we asked students to make an appointment online to reserve a tutor. And then we used some software that would forward that request to every qualified tutor. Then the first tutor who responded to that request gets it and gets to get paid for actually handling the help with that, with that student. And that required a lot for flexibility among the tutors ought to be available. So a student who wanted a reservation would fill out a form like this, which would then be forwarded to every student on, uh, who works for us, who, who was capable of handling those requests. And then those students would respond to the tutor set, to the, those students respond to the request saying, here's an email that they would send out saying, I'm ready to, to confirm that I can handle your request when you want it. And what we learned from this was we were able to accommodate about 80% of all the requests they had this, this fall, which is good, but not, I, I wish we could do better. We accommodated 248 requests in about 10 weeks. Um, we were unable to accommodate 63 of them. And for those 63 people, they would receive a message saying, sorry, we couldn't accommodate your request in 24 hours had passed, and then ask them to try again. Um, so you can see we were pretty busy with that between 20 and 40 requests a week uh, throughout, the, throughout the term. And our Python class was the most uh, demanding course for which we needed tutoring requests. We also noticed that our website traffic went up uh, this year compared to last. The orange lines is last year's traffic versus this year, uh, simply because of the pandemic. Uh, the last thing I want to talk a little bit about with you, Diana, I have about three minutes left. Maximum. 
Okay, is a project that Diana and I have been working on for the past several years, uh, which is our talk tech project, in which our my students and Diana Diana students work together to create virtual reality scenes. Uh, this year we couldn't have them do, we couldn't send it out anywhere, so we had them take Street View images from Google or make their own uh, background scenes that showed information about companies that they were learning about. So in this case, uh, these two people are standing on a bridge not, not far from you in Timisoara and talking about Uber. And then here comes the, uh, the Uber ride taxi for the guy to get into the cab and take the fastest taxi ride to Boston uh, that's possible. And so let's see if this works. Uh, we'll get to Boston in a minute. And, and so this is a way for our students to interact with each other, create new media. And here he arrives uh, from Timisoara. There's the cab coming. There it is, and uh, this is Boston, and uh, these guys, and the, the tag. There's the there's the cab, and our friend arrived uh, safely from your part of the world, and so this is a way for us to create uh, storytelling. Oops, the, the car is driving with the door open. I didn't notice that yesterday. Did you notice that they didn't close the door when they got when they got out of the car? So these are some examples of the kinds of things that we try to do to encourage learning both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Um, Apparently.